Hi everyone, welcome back to Social Studies. We are working on one of our five themes of geography. This week we are working on place. Remember last week we started with part one of place when we talked about physical characteristics. This week we are moving on part two of place and we will be looking at human characteristics. So again, yesterday we went through kind of these pictures here and just remember looking at the images Think to yourself, what is a human characteristic that sticks out from this, from any of these images? Also, be thinking of a physical characteristic that sticks out from these images. So if I'm looking, for example, let's look at this picture up here. I see some human characteristics, which are our buildings right here. And if I jump over to the, this photo, I'm seeing some physical characteristics with our water. And in the background, there are some beautiful green trees. Those would be some physical characteristics there. All right, we're going to be moving on today. And we're going to talk about political characteristics. So I'm going to read this little passage here, and then we will be getting started. Political characteristics of a place, including cities, states, and countries, are organized by where people live. These characteristics can be seen on the political map. Political maps show the borders of cities, states, and countries. A political map can also show how some borders have been created using the physical characteristics near them. For example, oceans, rivers, and mountain ranges can also create borders of countries or states. These borders help us by showing where an area stops and where a new one begins. So if we look at our map here, click on that, make it a little bigger. When we're looking at this political map, we see that there are lots of different borders throughout, of, throughout this picture. So again, a border is when we see two different states where they're meeting. So for example, California, this is the border of California. On the border is Nevada. It's on touches California's border. Arizona does, as well as Oregon. And even down here um, in Mexico, it does touch Mexico a little bit as well, just on this little spot here. So our political map helps show us where different states are and different countries throughout our world. Now, a lot of these borders were just created to help us find specific locations of things. There's not a real border that you would see from crossing from state to state. In some cases, there are some helpful clues that will help you see the difference of these borders. So for example, the ocean is a huge border. You know when you hit that ocean that you are no longer, for example, in the state of Florida. It is bordered by the ocean. There are other examples, including the Mississippi River. This is a political map, so we don't see the Mississippi River, but it does flow right here. You can see this line that comes down here. It is the border of states, but that border comes from the Mississippi River because it's such a great indicator to show where one state ends and one state begins. All right, I'm going to go into some images here. All right, so again, a political map shows countries, states, and towns. It is often colored with different colors sh to show different parts. They also show the boundaries between countries, states, towns. Boundaries are lines that show where one area ends and another begins. So that's what I was just talking a little bit about previously. Here is another different image of a political map. Notice on this map how the different states are different colors. It really helps us identify where one state is versus the other state. In this example, all of the colors are different states in the United States. And then our gray spots here are different countries. So for example, Canada is above us and Mexico is below us here. All right, and then in these political maps, they also have the labels of our states, and they also have labels of our ocean. So you can see the blue is our oceans on this map. And 
Uh, this map only has Washington, D.C. labeled as our national capital. You can see that red star right there. But a lot of times these political maps... So a lot of times these political maps will also have the capitals listed for each state. So for example, in Michigan, we might have our state capital listed as Lansing and other states as well. This particular map does not have all of the capitals throughout the United States. They just have our national capital, which is Washington, D.C. So this is an example of a political map. In previous lessons, when we were talking about place, we also looked at physical maps. So we're going to look at the difference today between a physical map and a political map. All right, so again, get a good look at this map right here. This is an example of our um, political map. All right, now we're going to go to the flip side of that and take a look at what our physical map might look like. So hold that thought in your head. If you have an image of what you think the political, or excuse me, the physical map might look like. So hold that thought in your head. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our physical map here. A physical map is a map that shows political geographical features, so physical characteristics of an area. Physical maps often use colors like green and blue and brown to show land, water, and greenery. Geological features include physical landforms like what we see in these images here. So take a look at this map. We see lots of beautiful water and they're labeled out here. We see mountains and waterfalls. Um, we see a little river right here. So a river would be an example of something you might find on a physical map. Mountains are something you would find on a physical map. Um, plains. So right here we do see some plains over here. Plains is something you would find on a physical map as well. And our desert. Lots of amazing, beautiful features here. Now this area is, is just an example here. We typically don't see all of these features in one location. But for this map here to give us a good idea of these different um, physical features that we find on a map, they put them all together here. This is what we might see in a textbook or on an image online if we looked up physical map. So this physical map is like the description said, it's using lots of greeneries. It's using blues and yellows to show what is going on here. What do you think the green would represent on this physical map? So the green here would represent all of the greenery that we have in our United States. Places where you're typically going to see a lot of forest, a lot of plants and vegetation is this greenery here. Um, we also have yellow. What do you think the yellow and the orange are representing? The yellow and the orange would be representing more dry areas, somewhere where it might be less vegetation is going to grow in these areas. And you can also see how the map is kind of raised right here, how it looks almost 3D and over here as well. Why do you think these places on our map are raised? It almost looks bumpy over here. That is to show different mountain ranges and different hills in these features that we might see on our physical map. And then lastly, we do see some blue all around our physical map, and that is representing, oops, that's representing our water that we see on our physical map here. I do want to mention that this particular picture does have the borders on our states, but notice how they're kind of faded in. That's not the main takeaway from our physical map. Yes, they put it here to help show the different features on our United States to help us see where these different states are, but we can just pretend that those lines are not here because typically with our physical map, they're not going to be divided up like that. That's where our political map comes in. So last thing I want to talk about real quick is the similarities and differences. We have political maps on this part of our Venn diagram. We have physical maps on this end and then what both have in common. So for our political maps, the first maps that we saw, they would be used to show where 
countries, cities, states are, and they typically have those borders that we see. So for example, Washington, D.C., it was located right on that political map. The state of Texas was outlined. The capital of our state would be considered the po part of our political map. Borders from state to state and country to country. So the United States and Canadian border, that would be shown on a political map. And of course, all different types of cities can be seen on political maps. On the flip side of that are physical maps. They are used to show where physical features like mountains, rivers, canyons are. So that map with all those wonderful physical landmarks and features, that's what we're typically going to see in our physical map. Now what do they both have in common? Both are maps that show where places are. And they help us understand the world around us on a much smaller scale. Okay. What you will be doing today, you're going to be going into Notability, and this is the assignment you'll be working on, physical versus political maps. On one side, you have physical maps, kind of like our Venn diagram, except we're not putting anything in the middle, physical maps versus political maps. You are going to be putting these boxes onto the right location here. Now, you could print this off if you want to actually print it off, cut out each square, and glue them to the right location, that is completely fine. If you do not have a printer at home, that's okay too. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your text box and you're gonna write in like normal. So for example, from a physical map, Mississippi River was my first one there. So I can now cross off Mississippi River because I know that is a physical feature, it's a landmark, that I could see on my physical map, okay? Mississippi River could go right there. On the flip side of that political map, Washington, D.C. That is a city, and we know when we have a city, that is going to be a label that is seen on a political map. All right. Your job is to finish the rest of these. Um, go through and place them in the right category. If you don't have your boxes, that's fine. You can just use your text box to put them in the correct location. All right, good luck on this assignment, and we'll see you tomorrow.